about product of Labour India Gurukulam, and I'll, I will always be. I would say Labour India was my turning point. Um, first of all, I would like to categorize um, my session, um, about 15 20 minutes of session, telling my own story. And then I would like to touch about some of the achievements. Um, some of the little achievements, there is so much to do, but some of the little achievements that uh, I could do till date, and some of the um, the knowledge or some of the lessons that I've learned from my life uh, to share you all of my commerce students there in Labour India curriculum. I hope everyone is being safe. Um, keep your social distancing. Learn from online. Learning can never be stopped wherever you are, however you do. Technology has become really nice platform to learn everything you wanted in this life. So utilize it properly. Um, now I'd like to start telling my story, Suzama, with your permission. Okay, so I started at Lipson uh, 2005, around mid of 2005. Um, let me tell you something. I was not a very bright student. Kids, I'm, I was never been a very bright student. That's why my parents actually wanted me to study at Labour India Gurukulam because um, my parents had experience of few students who have actually passed from Labour India Gurukulam um, with a bright, uh, good score on their CBSC. So that's that's how I end up at Gurukulam. Actually, I was not a bright student. Again, kids, don't take it as I was always been uh, in a really good student. Things like that. I was an average student when I came to Labour India Gurukulam. Still, I was just passing few units on my first or second semesters, but the environment, the culture, you know, the, the primitive way of how we respect our elders, these sort of things is very important to have a positive mindset. Uh, mindset. Uh, so I've learned that from Guru Kulam. It's not that, you know, I have even got a lot of, uh, you know, scoldings from my teacher, even from Susan Ma'am. I've done some <laughs> I've done some notorious uh, things at Labour India Gurukulam as well. But the end of the thing is, you have to believe on yourself. You have to keep progressing um, towards what you like to do. You have there is always an opportunity to think in a positive way and set up and set up your mindset. So I started in 2005 uh, commerce. And um, slowly I progressed. I learned that the value of education is very, very important. I usually used to travel from Nepal to Labour India Gurukulam. It used to take me about 57 hours on the train from um, Gorakhpur to uh, to Ernakulam and then by, uh, by uh, this small gypsy. I still remember that 57 hour of travel. That means whatever you do, you need some hard work as well. And that need you need to do hard. There is no shortcuts in life, dear friends. So, um, luckily, um, I, I was the college topper at that point of time um, with 82 percentage in CBSE, which is which I've never scored in my life. So um, I still have that uh, certificate of uh, college topper uh, in my home, um, back in Nepal and in Australia as well. So I always in the morning I see that I feel myself to be proud, and as I told you all, that was my turning point of my life. I learned that anything can be possible with, with your hard work and I'm still I'm still following that path and I'm becoming uh, what I wanted to be. Um, guys, I'm 23, uh, 33 year old now. I've completed uh, my year 12 when I was uh, 18, 19 year old and came to Australia. I started my Australia journey um, from Melbourne actually. So I studied my Bachelor in Commerce major in accounting because Accounting was what um, you know I was interested on in from the start. I completed my uh, bachelor in commerce, major in accounting from Melbourne. I start uh, completed in somewhere around 2010. Um, and another thing I, I would like to add up here is uh, the journey of Australia was not easy for me. In 2008, there was a global recession going on. It was very very hard to find a job, and um, uh, back in my family is is not that well off, rich to you know, provide me every support of it. So I've started with a small bit and pieces of a job. I didn't even know how to buy a train ticket. You know, a small basic things that you learn from your everyday life is what is going to make you successful in life. So I didn't even know how to use a vacuum cleaner or a, or a mop. 
that is the basic job that you do uh, in in Australia or any part of the world, I guess, because we we never try and learn things back home. I think it's same in Nepal or or in uh, in India as well. We have to learn basics in your life. In your life, in home, you have to try and help your parents as much as you can. You learn things when you do. So, if you want to get, see in your school life or your college life, you're looked up, looked after by your parents. But when you go to your universities, you have to do by your own. So there is no one to look after you. You know, you'll be starting in a group of, you know, thousands of people, and you have to look after yourself. That's what I learned first thing when I arrived in Australia. I still remember Sojan sir. I don't know if he's he's there. Jaimon sir, Ralphie sir, Ranjit sir, Sanod sir. I I'm very much happy to you know still be connected and on, on my Facebook page. We still uh, have uh, some conversations that they still look after me. Those sort of culture that uh, that Labor India Gurukulam has given to me and all of you is very important throughout our, throughout your life. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm very proud to to say that I'm a product of Lips. Um, so then I continued my life in Melbourne, completed my accounting degree. Second thing is the the entrepreneurship. Uh, is within yourself. What I like, would like to say is, I have never made a single resume in my life. The job that you that you get or that I got is from a reference or how I approach to find a job. Writing a resume is just a basic approach to get a job. You need see if you are see what I think think is if you are involved in sports and if you are involved in a in a team sort of activities you know how to speak with people you know how to approach people every question has two two answers yes or no if you approach the chances are 50 50 you can get s that's why you know whenever you play a game football volleyball basketball whatever it is you are learning that team spirit you're learning how to lead a team or how to play as a team so don't think that while labor india guru club is so much focused on on sports because that's what i've learned from labor india guru club as well when you involved in sports you learn how to work in a team you know you learn how to communicate with each other so that's what it's very important uh, you know to be a part of any team i don't say if you're not interested on in sports you do a you do a work at you know the group work activities that's where you learn how to work in a team so in my life, I've never made a resume. I've always approached people with the skill that I have. That's what you need to learn when you get out from schools or universities, when you actually try to find a job. When I was, in, when I was a student back in Melbourne, I opened up a hostel. So remember, being an entrepreneurship is an idea. So the idea was, that point of time in 2008 and 9, it was very, very hard to find a house. That's when I, I got an idea. Why don't I make, why don't I start a hostel so that I can, I have to leave and pay a rent anyway. Plus I can give a, a facility to about 10 to 15 people who are looking for a house. That's how, you know, I opened one hostel and then two hostels. That's how I made some money to pay my fees in university because the university fees in Australia is very, very expensive. You're talking about, um, at that point of time, it was $12,000 a semester, $6,000, $12,000 Australian dollar. At that time, was very, very hard to make. Um, that's how I started my, uh, my business, actually. And then I started a cleaning business. I needed a job, and I had a team, so I knew how to lead a team. I started an, 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 uh, a cleaning business where, where I uh, employed 16 people. I used to have two vans then where I used to go and work and do the cleaning job. That's how I started earning something to pay my fees. So that, that way, I created a job for 15, 20 people. That means it's not that, you know, it's, it's always not like you have to find a job. You, have, you can create a job for yourself and for others as well. That's, that's the second lesson that I want to give it, uh, give, it to, give it to you. And always, and from Melbourne, I moved to Canberra, which was at that point of time, um, talking about 2012, um, hardly there were like 300 to 400 um, uh, Asians or particularly South Asian people in, in Canberra. I didn't used to see someone like my face. You never should be afraid to move from one place to another place for yourself. You never hesitated. Um, 
on any changes. You just go up with a change. That's what uh, the third lesson I want to give it to you all. I moved for my permanent residency um, uh, in Canberra in two, back in 2013, and I started working in the hospitality industry as a manager. I had al al already developed my uh, management skills or uh, a leadership skill during my, my stay in Melbourne. I started working as, an, as a, a brand's uh, manager in a, in, a, in a hospitality industry, and I was promoted as a uh, area manager. I used to look after six different stores. So that's how I've actually sharpened my uh, um, entrepreneurship or my leadership skills throughout time. It's, it's there, as I told you, there has never been a shortcut to achieve in life, but it will not take a longer time if you if you follow these steps. So um, in 2016, I thought about a new idea. I thought like there's too many students moving to Australia from all all over the world, and education is a is the second highest uh, industry in Australia after mining. So from, from India, we have about 130 to 140,000 students coming every year, except the, the period of COVID that we had this year or the last year. Uh, we have 130,000 students coming every year. From Only from Nepal, which is a small, tiny country, we have uh, 57,000 a year. So India stays in third largest student provider to Australia. Sorry, it is the second and Nepal is third. So that's how I, I had an idea. Why don't I start uh, becoming an education consultant where I can help thousands of students willing to come to Australia or who have already started their study uh, education journey in Australia. And I meet a lot of labor Indians as well in Australia. In Melbourne, Sydney, or even Canberra, I've got a couple of friends who studied together with me. So yeah. I've got a really good market in, in South Asia as well, on top of that. So the fourth thing that um, I want to put forward is doing a business is not, should not stop you to contribute for your community as well. You should always contribute what you, what you achieve. So I've always been involved. I'm not a person who can sit in home and watch a computer or watch TV. I always get out, meet people, meet different people, and always think what can be done and contribute to the society. So that's how I started or joined um, a, club, uh, a society called Australian Nepal Friendship Society. This, this society was established in 2000, sorry, 1982, very old organization. And this organization actually helped a lot of students starting in Australia as well. So this, this organization helped uh, even Australians for their welfare. So that's how I got involved in Australian Nepal Friendship Society as a member and gradually grow as a secretary. And now I'm current president for this, this society. This society have actually helped a lot of people back in 2015 when we had a massive um, devastating earthquake back in Nepal. We've actually opened two new schools. And uh, one thing that you missed from my Facebook page is up. Um, we have opened two schools in, in Nepal. And in one school, what I'm doing from my part is from year one to year 10, I'm actually sponsoring five brightest students. So my plan, my idea is to give them uh, free education from year one to year 10 and 12 and bring five people to Australia after that. That means if one student can come to Australia, they can, it's benefited to their, to his society or his surroundings. So if you can do five, that will give five different families an opportunity to grow. So that I've started, that I haven't said in my Facebook page, but the small contribution that you can do for your community always counts. Um, second thing is, um, I don't play games now because of my uh, my busy schedule. But I'm in heavily involved in cricket and football. Um, you know that I that I love to play when I was in school days or even in college days. So um, not only sponsoring, but I get involved in their. You know what I think is when someone is interested to play games, they should only focus on playing games. Rest can be a, you know will accompany you if you actually wanting to play games. So our team is uh, is a League Two champions. So you're talking about uh, about seventy to eighty uh, players, and this not this is not limited to Nepali Indians or, or uh, Bangladeshi Sri Lankan. You're talking about 
all Australian teams as well, which is registered in Canberra. So it's a very big league. So we are the champion for that league. So that means, you know, if if a players are motivated, if they are given opportunities, even our part of the world can can uh, show and can, uh, you know, prove that they are equally good as anyone else. Um, so. So following that, I'm uh, I'm a recent second recent president of ONSM. It is Oceana, uh, Nepalese Sports Meet. Um, you know, uh, there is even big event going on uh, in next uh, April uh, around Easter time. So this games is basically in not only limited to interstate but New Zealand and Bali as well. So it's going to be a very big event with 400 plus players, and I'm I'm leading I'm leading that as well. And on top of that. Um, um, I was considered as goodwill ambassador for Corner Positive Trust. Um, so this this world is already too much, um, you know, populated with negativity. The concept of this group was: if we share positive things in your life, if you, if your friends and families, um, you know, you make friends who have got positive attitude. If you have surrounded with friends with positive attitude, you always think positive way. So the concept of this group was. Uh, uh, to have an uh, institution where, you know, at least once in a month you stay for an hour or for half an hour and spread positivity. So, uh, you know, you share only positive things. Every person has two sides, positive and negative. Don't even talk about his negative side. Always talk about positive side so that, you know, even a person who is angry with you, will be happy eventually if you start talking positive things about him. And this is going to change the world. That's why I'm participating in this. Uh, I was actively participating in this with this trust. And now I've been considered as uh, a goodwill ambassador for uh, for this this positive trust. This is non-political, non-religious. You know, there's nothing to do with politics. It's just like we sit together and we talk positiveness. Positive talking is also considered as a new technique of you, of meditation. You don't really have to do meditate to, you know, to be, to be healthy. If you talk positive, you can be healthier as well. So this is the concept of that uh, this trust. On top of that, not limiting to, um, you know, these are the some achievement I have. And in terms of business, not limiting to the education and migration. I've involved. Uh, I've got an accounting form as well, and on top of that, I've got an IT form as well, which is which is also up and running. And uh, I've got like four branches running at the moment in in Australia and one branch in in Nepal. So slowly, I'm just trying to get uh, my businesses spread throughout throughout Australia with a positive mindset. Um, with the education wise, I've never stopped studying. When I completed my bachelor in uh, commerce. Um, accounting. I've started MBA as well, and I've completed that online. And at the moment, I'm doing postgraduate diploma in migration law. So I've got a new idea now, I'm, and I I, I want to pursue myself as a migration lawyer in future. That's why I've started that study. And the good news is I've recently completed that course. I still have to get my graduation done on this. So what I'm trying to uh, say here is you never stop learning. You always, you know, the A is your business, your family. I've got two kids. Nothing should stop you to learn new things in life. I'm really sorry. I've got a bit of cold and uh, flu going on. But yeah, you never stop learning. Whenever you get a chance, you pick up a book and start learning. Learning is the only thing that, uh, you know, is with you. For example, it's lockdown going on or you cannot go to college or university. Pick up a book and start learning. Learn from people. Learn from books. The, the the education that you're going to learn from books, you cannot, you know, get the full knowledge from the from your academic, uh, you know, qualifications. You always focus on learning things. You always read books. Um, okay. Now I would like to get my second session of um, entrepreneurship skills. I mentioned the first skill that you should have is an idea, an idea that no one have thought about, or maybe no one, something different to what other things. You should have an idea to, to start with. And remember something, when, you, when I say idea, this should also match your personality. The first step is an idea, 
and it should match with your personality. For example, you should believe yourself that I'm good in this. Okay, so this the second uh, step of being an being a successful businessman or entrepreneurship is is willingness. You need to be willing to do or execute things. You need you need to have a solid idea plus willingness to achieve anything. The third important thing is is team. You need a team. No one can do anything by themselves. You need a proper team of a of a light-minded people who shares or who believe believe on you. So if you have a team, if you have an idea, and if you have a willingness, you need to put a little bit of hard work on this. Okay. So hard work is something that is important to achieve anything. But remember, after that fourth skills or the hard work, you have failure as well. You have failure in your life as well. It's not it's not hundred percent guaranteed that whatever you do will have a success. So the sixth lesson is you learn from your failure. Whenever you fall down or whenever you fail, you note down what was the reason for that failure, and you do not repeat that on your next step. You might get a second failure, but you learn something out of your second failure as well. You always learn from your failure. And always have a positive mindset. You always have a positive mindset, mindset, whatever you do. And to have a positive mindset, you need a mentor who, is, who can also be a companion with a positive mindset. You always need, need someone who is a men, who is who can do mentoring to you you always you always you know have your say with your with a mentor and get ideas from your mentor whatever you do and remember you always use your theoretical knowledge that you have learned from school you never forget that for example i still remember when i when i studied my um economics um we had an we had a topic of uh, market equilibrium you should one lesson, I've never forget that lesson. Uh, Sojan sir used to teach, teach me, uh, teach our class um, um, economics that time. He always used to say, never, you don't have to reduce your price if you are in market equilibrium. So these are, this is just a simple example of using your theoretical knowledge in, in practical. You know, when you do business or anything, you don't have to drop your price if you think that market is not down. You always have to keep it, keep and being in that market equilibrium. These are the small tips that I would like to, you know, give give it out to our commerce students studying at Labor India curriculum. Um, I think I've covered some of the skills that, you know, if somebody is willing to or uh, wanting to be a successful businessman in, in coming future. If you have any questions or uh, questions, I'm more than happy to address that and and try to help you. If anyone has any questions, good morning, sir. I am JB Man of class twelve, hello. and I would like to, uh, hello hello sir. I would like to ask a question to you, sir. Does Australia government provide any backup for startup enterprise entrepreneurs? Um, okay. Australia is a country, um, so they, they usually, how they do it is, they always promote businesses in Australia. For example, we had one year of um, the, um, the COVID situation and they, to uplift a business, they gave like, you know, the, literally they provided or they pumped, um, you know, money to the businesses so that they can pay their staff. So the economic policy of Australia is, is something that we need to learn as well. So if you want to start up a business, and if you have a concept, as I said, if you have an idea, and if you provide that idea to, to banks or even uh, to get an approval, if you have idea that is something that is going to benefit to Australia, obviously they support you. Is, is, that, is that the right question? Is that the question uh, that you ask for? Yes, sir. Okay question for today is like what are the basic requirements uh, to get into an Australian university like the examinations or the scores required okay so if you're talking about uh, having your um, 
bachelor degree in, in Australia, the basic requirement uh, is at least 50% uh, marks in your year 12, number one. Second requirement is um, IELTS or PT. Overall, 6.5, not less than 6. That can be your PT or, um, or IELTS as well. There are two requirements, and there shouldn't be much gap between your year 12 and the intended course in Australia. So if you have at least 50% marks on your year 12 and 6.5 overall, not less than 6, you qualify for uh, to get off a letter from a good university in Australia. So that is the first step to uh, get in Australia, off a letter from uh, a provider that you're willing to study. And always remember that if you are a, a commerce background, you should you should try and pursue your, your education towards commerce. For example, you know it can be um, a, you know bachelor in IT as well. Don't don't forget in Australia you don't need to have an, a very strong IT background to study uh, um, IT in Australia. So the trend is so how Australia works is. They work on policy and they look at the, the economic, uh, economic policy as well. For example, Australia has declared $1.3 trillion deficit this year. So Australia has already decided uh, to make, when they make their policy, they have decided to use most of the tax money on manufacturing industry and on IT. Because Australia really don't want it to be like USA, where USA is depending, depending on India. So they want to secure, they want uh, to promote IT students. So if you're studying, um, you know, uh, plus two in commerce, and you've got some interest in IT, IT can be a good scope to study in future. Okay, and the basic requirement, as I told you, at least 50 percentage on your year 12, you need your, your CBSC, and 6.5 overall, not less than six. You can ask me as many questions as you like, guys. I can see 47 participants here. I'm pretty sure you might have some ask, uh, questions. And I, and I told you in the beginning, you should not hesitate to ask questions. Anything that I can help. So first of all, thank you for the great session. We were able to relate a lot of things that you have experienced in Labor India. So my question is, like, uh, what all are the scholarship opportunities that we can get in uh, abroad, like in Australia? OK. At the moment, uh, universities and colleges in Australia are providing um, scholarship as well. As I told you before, education sector is the second highest income generating sector in Australia. So even how they make policies are they are, they are um, you know, they're trying the college and universities, they don't have students at the moment. And China is the largest market and second is India. So that's why they are trying to provide scholarship and trying to attract students uh, from, from India and Nepal. So different colleges and universities have different schemes. They give up to 25 to 30% scholarship for the, um, you know, the average student. And uh, you can come and start in Australia with full scholarship with universities like universities, um, like uh, ANU. There are five big universities in Australia, and they've got their own funds uh, to get international students in, in scholarships as well. So you're looking at from 10% to 25% to a, a general or an ordinary student, whereas 100% scholarship options are also there for bright students. So thank you. Can can specify, if you can specify uh, you know what really you want to study, then I can I can uh, sort of give you more insight on this. Yeah, so, what about computer science? If I, if, I, if I want to pursue computer science or anything major in computer? Exactly right. So that that's it, that's the point that I was trying to make before to Anusha as well. As Australia is trying to promote IT professionals, uh, most of the universities and colleges are providing scholarship for IT graduates. And if you are willing to enroll on this July or coming February sessions, they are, they are providing online classes as well. I know the borders are closed and they are not planning to open border until 2022, maybe mid of 2022. You've got option to study online as well. So again, Australian uh, Department of Home Affairs, they have made a policy that even if you study online, you'll be getting that two years of post-study working right visa. So you don't have to be studying face-to-face -to, -face to get that visa. 
there is an online opportunity to enroll, get a COE, and um, you know start your study online as well. So IT is an is a, a next prospect for Australia, and a lot of universities, almost every universities, are providing scholarship at the moment. Yes, sir. like a. Uh... Can I ask you one more question? Yes, if you yes, permit. Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Like, like uh, in we, uh, as in America, in American countries and all, we have ACT, and in the international level, we have SAT examination, right? That's so, right. is there any type of specific examination like for Australia or anything like that? Not really. So, um, there are two two kinds of scholarships. One is on a merit basis and on a basis of country. So, Nepal, India, Bangladesh, Bhutan, they qualify for that scholarship in the first place. as i mentioned india is the second highest market for australia and the second thing is if you if you have 70% than our score on your year 12 there are few universities who are providing up to 25% scholarship at this moment okay so two things you need to understand one academic um, excellency so that means 70% plus is considered as good uh, good uh, result plus in english you can either do pearson pte or ielts on that one you need to score at least 6.5 overall not less than 6 marks if you want to pursue your bachelor degree so if you have 70% and 6.5 overall not less than 6 you'll qualify for up to 25% scholarship so good morning sir uh, i'm in class 12 uh, commerce i wanted to ask uh, could you please share memory of yours in kerala or in gurukula yeah um <clears throat> all right so i i lived in in hostel so as i said uh, i studied far far away from my home my experience in in labor india gurukulam was a turning point of my life um back in in nepal i actually failed my air 12 i was as i said a good companion so I'm, as i mentioned one of the point good compare i didn't have a good companion back in nepal so i usually used to play basketball um i don't used to go to colleges uh, on my year 12 back in nepal so i had a, a circle of friends who is not letting me <laughs> study but in gurukulam that experience will been changed um second thing is little bit of ego is also something that that works this time so i had a bit of a ego i got i had two friends who always used to you know sort of um trying to win me on on marks or anything so i've got a little bit of ego a, a positive ego that also changed me um or you know motivated me to study so that sort of experience i always i thank them personally because of them uh, i had a bit of a motivation to study um i used to have uh, about six nepalese friends when i was studying uh, in uh, at liver india gurukulam we used to play games we used to participate in um um i learned how to write poems as well i can remember i learned how to write poems as well <laughs> um when i was living in the gurukulam um i have got some smack from um, george sal george sir um, um uh, morning in morning because i um pretend to be sick <laughs> so i i got some smack from uh, george sir as well those are some experience that uh, you know that is very important and valuable in your life as an ordinary student um, i did a lot of mistakes but i learned from the mistake that is the most important thing that uh, i shared you know, this morning to you all um on top of that i used to be like you so you know as a normal um uh, ordinary student that that you all are and how is how is your experience by the way studying at liver liver india gurukulam uh, uh it's good only just that i couldn't go to kerala and still in oman where are you at the moment i'm in oman so i couldn't go to kerala till now okay i so didn't even go to the school of labor india oh you never been to Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've actually learned more than I do. Put the question in my mind. I still, you know, I think learning a language is also something that is very important to me because most of my friends they uh, used to speak Malayalam. They don't have to speak Hindi there, English and Malayalam. So I used to still learn Malayalam, bit of Malayalam. That language has actually built some, uh, you know, value in my business as well. At the moment, I think I've got more South Indian clients than Nepalese, ma'am. Yeah, 
So I've got that connection still <laughs> still going on. So um, somehow you can manage with the Malayalam. You do your yeah? Malayalam. You learned in Gurukulam, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. I, did yeah, okay. I, I, I was big fan of Mohan Dilwal. Also, as I said, a normal student, but you know, I've learned a lot of things from from Gurukulam. So I know you are in you are in uh, Oman at the moment. I know you're missing, uh, you know, to go and study at Labour India Gurukulam. But when borders are open, um, you know, go and stay in, <coughs> stay in uh, Gurukul Hostel. We have a, a very nice and tasty fish curry <laughs> that I miss. Yeah, yeah, they're all missing this wonderful chance of, uh, you know, especially uh, that their sports time yeah. on the, all those activities. They really miss it. And, yeah, Bob, uh, and one of them as well. Chance to meet uh, very soon. Yes, yes. So we're waiting that? for that day to join with us. So when do you think it will be possible, Susanna? Uh, not sure. Uh, by November or December, I think after vaccination, I think it will be possible. But not sure about it. We are okay. waiting for that. Yeah, let's hope for the best and waiting for that day. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, yeah. sir. Yes, yes, please. Sir, I am Amrit from sixth grade, but I wanted to know if there's any university in in Australia that teaches astrophysics. Um. All right. So there is one university which is which is ANU, uh, located at university uh, at at Canberra, um, who teaches. Is that is that what you're passionate about? Yes, sir. Okay, there is only one university as far as I know. If you search um, ANU, Australian National University, you'll have that uh, scope available. Okay, sir. So do you speak Malayalam? Yeah, as I said, Kochi Kochi Aryam, I still listen to Malayalam songs. So you can figure out like what, what you're trying to say. Raina, you can ask me uh, in Malayalam. I, I'll try to give answer in English. Family, family, uh, okay. In the in the world, in Sudanli. At the moment, they are they are in uh, Nepal. My my parents are in Nepal. They're doing good, and uh, my wife and my, got two kids in in Canberra, and they are fine. They are expecting you to speak ma in Malayalam. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sukham. They all are Sukham. Okay. All right. Is there is there any other thing that I can help you with today? Sir, I'm again asking you the question, sir. I am the J one of class yes. Thomas. Sir, I would like yes. to ask uh, two questions to you, sir. What's the scope of CA in Australia? Does Australia follow CA or ACCA? Then second question is, sir, sir, can you explain about the course migration lawyer? That for that thing, yeah. I'm studying uh, a graduate diploma in migration law. So in Australia, unlike India and any part of the other world, uh, to to give migration related consultation, you need to be an a Mara agent. Okay, so you need to have a basic qualification of migration law, which is <clears throat> a master level course, graduate diploma in in migration law. I've actually completed that course recently in this June. So there is a there are only seven thousand migration lawyers in Australia, and then uh, basically I'm one of them. So it's like a license to give a actual migration related consultation. So that's graduate diploma in migration law. And your first part of the question was, uh, what are the prospect to you know in Australia for CPA and <clears throat> and IPAs? So there are three bodies in Australia: CPA. CA and IPA. These are the three bodies who looks after CAs in Australia. To be a CA in Australia, you need a formal qualification, at least a bachelor degree in commerce, major in accounting. Plus, you have to give eight examinations for different individual units. Okay, to be a proper CA practicing in Australia. So it also has a license. It's not just like you studied bachelor or <clears throat> Masters in accounting, and you can practice uh, tax accounting in Australia. You need to have a license, and this license is issued by either CA, CPA, or IPA. These are the three bodies in Australia, and you need to give examination and pass those eight units. Okay, even after you pass those eight units, you need to practice under a, 
a qualified CPA for one year. You need to have one year of traineeship uh, with a proper CPA to have your own license registered. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No problem. Uh, good morning, sir. My name is Jess from uh, Clark. Clark uh, I can barely hear you. Uh, good morning, sir. My name is Jills from Commerce 12. Yes. Uh, my question is, what was your favorite sport while you were in Lips, cricket or football? Um, I would say football. I actually um, hurt my um, ligament when I was playing football in uh, in Liverpool, India, Gurukulam. You need to be very, very careful when you play football, though. You need a lot of exercise. You need to be physically fit uh, when you play football. Unlike cricket, cricket is something that gets less injury. But I always loved uh, football. So I would say football is my uh, is my preferred game over cricket. Do you no miss problem. Your home in Kerala? Sorry? Do you miss Kerala? Yeah, of course. I'm in in Kerala. Um, you know, have you guys been to Lakshadweep? Have you, no, sir. No, so we, sir. We had an opportunity. I only heard of the name. Yeah. So I actually had an opportunity to go uh, uh, Lakshadip uh, from Labor India Guru Kulam. <coughs> we used to have a yearly, uh, you know, excursion. And uh, see what I missed, but I would like to visit uh, Lakshadip once with my wife and family. So Lakshadweep is something that, uh, you know, you are completely out of this world. Lakshadweep still have some island, which is untouched by people. People don't live there. So there is crystal clear water there. You can actually see fish from, from the outside, you know what I mean? So it's, it's really, really good. If you have an opportunity, visit Lakshadweep. You are from the God, uh, uh, God-owned country. So don't miss Lakshadweep, uh, if you have an opportunity, I miss Kerala a lot. I I, I was planning to visit um, in Ke in Kerala uh, back in two thousand uh, in in two thousand twenty. So we got got hit by COVID. So my, I've always told my wife that I'll take to take you to Kerala one day. So I'll definitely visit Kerala. I still I still have my old friends there. Yes. Uh, sir, would I mind? Would you mind? I will ask four more, three more questions. Yes, please. Uh, what are the basic requirements to get into Australian universities? That is my first question. The second question is, which is more useful, opting an MBA after BCom or BA Economics? Sir, third question: Will Australian universities accept Indian degrees? And fourth question is, which is your favorite football team in the, around the world, like Barcelona, Real Madrid? Then, who is your favorite player, Messi or Ronaldo? <laughs> Messi. So to address your first question, um, so uh, difference between MBA and uh, um, sorry, bachelor in uh, accounting or bachelor in uh, ad, uh, business administration. Okay, both of the course has an equal value. If you think you can, you are good with numbers or you you are good with accounting, go for accounting. But you know, doing a bachelor in business administration you need to see the scope of the jobs that you can find everyone cannot be a good accountant right but if you do bachelor in business administration you can be a, you can be a project administrator you can be a contract administrator you can be sales and marketing manager you can be marketing specialist or you can be a production manager so there are a lot of scopes if you do a bachelor in business administration. But if you look at the, the permanent residency prospect, doing a bachelor in business administration, you need a job. You need at least one year of experience to get a skills assessment. There is a body called a VETA system. You need to have a job. Okay. So that's why you want people study bachelor in accounting instead of bachelor in business administration the reason is when you do bachelor in accounting you don't need experience all you need is a professional year course one year of course that will get you skill assessment as an accountant 
So that's why a lot of lot of people from our part of the world study accounting, but you unfollow the trend. So we do follow the trend. For example, if if thousand people buys house in Marangatapalli, the house price would be very very high. If only ten people buys house in Palad, the house price would be low. So that's why you unfollow the trend. So if everyone is studying accounting, that does not mean everyone will be accountant. Australia needs accountant, but it's not easy to be an accountant. That's why it depends on you know what what is your passion. You really want to be a marketing person. You want to be an uh, a project administrator or contract administrator, or you want to be an accountant. Studying bachelor in accounting can only make you accountant. So that's how you you need to understand what you actually want to do because. When you study in Australia, you are spending about at least sixty to seventy thousand dollars. So when you spend that money, you need to know what you are studying. That means if you if you are willing to study a course, go for the uh, you know re- do a bit of a research. Not only universities or uh, what part of Australia you want to be in. What are the career prospects that you can get by studying the course? Always do a research. Always read books. Always um, you know, get consultation with a proper person who knows about Australia. One of the consultation consul, uh, consultant back in Nepal told uh, one of the students that Sydney and Brisbane is just separated by a bridge. You know, a lack of, you know, you go and meet people who have some sort of knowledge what, they, what you know, what consultation they are doing or giving it to student. Okay. At the end of the session, I'll pass you my email address as well. If you have any question related to this, you can simply write me an email and I'll reply you with the proper proper guidelines. End of the session. Yeah. The this one. Yeah. Sure. This is uh, uh, so we actually own the local business award in Canberra. So okay. in education sector, we've done a pretty good in this last four years. So Canberra, as a capital city, has given us award as a best business um, in Canberra. So you know what I what I'm trying to say is we've got a lot of hurdles like we, our English is not that great. We're from a background uh, we are not from a very rich country, and uh, you know we lo- we have learned a very little when we when we're back in the country. But when you come to when you go overseas, we learn from a scratch, and we can actually prove to them that we we are better than them. So you, you know that is something that we need to learn that we can do. So it's not like we cannot do, we can do. I'm very happy and with your Sir? presentation. Thank you so much. Sir? Yes, please. Can I ask one more question? Yes, please. So if we need to get an uh, astro, if we want to learn astrophysics in a university which you told, yes. A and U, so what yes. do we need to learn for that? Um. Okay, so there are few few uh, things that you need to understand our average student anu will not give off a letter so you need at least 85 to 90 percentage score on your year 12 to get in this sort of courses in universities anu is regarded as the top five university in australia okay so you are in year 12 now at the moment or year, year 10 Sir, I'm ten years old. Oh, you're ten years old. Yeah. So what what I want you to do is, um, you know, you if you have already set up your mind that you want to study this, the requirement to pursue or to even to get an offer letter is eighty-five percent score in year twelve. Okay, sir. Okay. So at this moment, you need to focus. Uh, you are on year seven, I think. Yeah. No, sir. I'm in sixth. You are in six. So, on your year twelve, you know, try to score a good, good score, and not limiting to Australia. You have a very good, uh, you know, opportunity in Europe as well. So, see if Europe can also be a good destination. Australia has, uh, is not that great for astrophysics uh, education. Like, let me tell you the fact. Okay, okay? sir. You have to try and see some universities in in Europe as well. Europe is really, really good for physics, astrophysics. Okay, sir.